Torboro's Bane. The City Fathers have resorted to their last option. At an emergency council, they decided that they must summon outside help. They have offered rich reward to any heroes that can aid them. You have answered their call. Hello everybody, and welcome to this special Advanced Hero Quest uh, video. Um, we're actually not going to play it today because I'm still painting up some of the henchmen for it. And uh, But before that, we can go through and create some of our characters. Uh, because in the game you can actually, there is an actual uh, character creation system. And um, as we have our heroes, we know who they are, we can um, create them ourselves. Um, I just want to go through quickly through the rulebook. Now this is my original rulebook that I picked up way back when it was released and I think it was released in looks to be 1989 uh, when it was first released uh, so yeah it was developed by G uh, Jervis Johnson and uh, all the floor plans and counters by Gary Chalk so there you go I mean this is real old hammer um, even the cover was done by Wayne England I love this cover here of the Skaven and yeah, it's um, it's got a lot of cult, it's got a bit of a cult following, but I don't think it's it was ever as commercially successful as the original Hero Quest, for a number of reasons. Uh, the first one is that, you know, it was only available uh, maybe through select stores. I don't think it was available ever in regular department stores like Hero Quest. That's where we picked up ours, and it was just a, you know, mass massively. Um, you know, exposed uh, across all countries in all different languages, I suppose. But Advanced Hero Quest was a different beast in itself. So it took on more of a role-playing aspect to the game more than Hero Quest. Hero Quest is more of a fun and still very enjoyable to play, um, sort of a dice and adventure dungeon crawl. And this is sort of taking it, as I say, advanced to the next level. But it's got some really unique and... Uh, really interesting gameplay mechanics to it, which I really like. First of all, it's a D12 system, not a D6 system. So uh, that is uh, very unique for a Games Workshop uh, game. And also it's completely blind as in to, you know, you're generating the dungeon floor plans. It's not that it's all pre-generated, unless in certain cases where um, the dungeon or the, the scenario you're playing do, does have uh, pre pre-generated uh, floors and, you know, rooms and cor corridors and that kind of thing. Otherwise, you're just sort of uh, wandering around the dungeon, trying to find the quest room to defeat the, you know, the big boss there and um, collect your treasure and descend the stairs down into the next level. And you have these certain expeditions where you can go in, do that, come out, you know, grab some more stuff and um, heal up or whatever and go back in. I've, I've actually put some highlighted uh, sections on here when when I first got it and I must have you know obviously I've cu cut it out and, and put it into this um, into into a binder but this is the original one that I, I, I actually had it does show its age it's sort of yellowing and got spots here and there and that, and that kind of thing like I'm not going to go through this as a review of the game rules um, we're gonna we're gonna actually play the game so you can actually see what it's like and how it actually works, uh, but it is quite different. It's it's so it's so different from Hero Quest in a lot of ways. But it essentially is a dungeon crawler uh, with all those dungeon crawling elements in it. It does have a couple of interesting things like uh, critical hits. When you roll a twelve, um, it allows you to make another f a free attack. And fumbles. If you roll a fumble, the enemy gets a free attack on you which is quite a cool uh, little system there. I really like that. I really like that um, part of the rules. It's, it's quite fun to roll those. And you've got uh, fate points as well. So if you're, you can either, you know, use a fate point to avoid death or you can avoid, a, uh, you can use a fate point to avoid the, um, uh, or re-roll a roll or whatever, uh, or to negate um, another another uh, enemy's role or something like that. Uh, you got things like uh, recovering missiles every time you have, if you have a ranged weapon and you use your 
your arrows, you need to go and collect them and you can roll the dice to see whether they are still intact or whether they're actually busted and you can't use them again. And I like, I like that aspect to it too, actually. Got a bit of bookkeeping there. Uh, now the wizard's got some, a range of different spells. In the, in the main core rule book, you had the Bright Wizard spellbook and then later expansions in White Dwarf, they brought out other spellbooks like for light magic and I think there's amethyst magic as well. Um, so I'll have to decide on what spellbook our wizard is going to use. Maybe you want to comment in the... I'll put a post up on the in the community section and maybe you can vote on which spellbook the wizard uh, she'll, she'll take on his adventure. And you, you've, you've already got four pre-known spells and you've got the components for those before the adventure starts. Uh, now, as I'm playing a solo adventure, um, the game games master will not be part of the uh, of this game. Now, normally the games master would, you know, set all the tiles and, and prepare the the quest for the characters, and also have a little um, little counter bag where he'd have all these different counters, and every time it's the the game master's turn, you'd roll a dice and a roll a one or a twelve. Uh, you would uh, he would uh, he or she would attain a um, dungeon counter, and that might have wandering monsters. It could have a trap on there. It could have an ambush or fate point or escape uh, or a character counter in there, just to throw some random um, random event events into your scenarios. Uh, it's also got hazards, so you've got different hazard rooms and uh, the effects of those. Um, again, we won't look too closely to those. We want to make them a bit of a surprise if you've never played Advanced Hero Quest. And of course, it covers treasure. And yeah, a lot of the White Dwarves gave a lot of additional rules uh, for, for treasure as well. And um, we might in incorporate those uh, later on if the um, solo gameplay videos become successful and people want to see more. Um, then you've got like, you know, like post uh, expeditions, um, you've got like a random events table. You can probably see a lot of influences here into uh, it, its, its successor, which was uh, Warhammer Quest, released in around 1994 when I went to the UK. It was around about that time when that game was released. But this is really old Hammer, um, as you can see from the art in the preview, uh, which was uh, voiced in wonderful character by Owen Staten. Um, sort of giving us a, um, a prequel backdrop backdrop to the adventure and um, and you can see a lot of uh, the art that was contained within within the book. Okay, so now we're at the hero creation tables. So this is where we'll take our cue and we will start rolling for our fellow adventurers. Now I want to say a big thank you to I've got here Mork Mork Ulva. From YouTube who um, who I asked you know the guys on YouTube to come up with some names for our adventures and a lot of people had some really creative uh, names and I um, I was gonna put it to the vote but it just, it just seemed like you know just too much hassle so sorry I just thought I'd just ch uh, choose the names myself so first of all we have um, Astrazar the bookish and he is the human wizard we don't know which college of magic he'll take so we'll find out later but here, this is your character sheet. Um, so it's got here your starting and current um, ability, uh, you know, your abilities, your your um, your statistics, and here as well, start and uh, current. So we've got things, you know, very common like uh, weapon skill, bow skill, strength and toughness, speed, bravery, intelligence, fate, and wounds. Okay. So on these uh, hero creation tables. We've got all the stats here, and then the dice roll we need to make per uh, race. Now, as I don't have a lot of the other polyhedra dice that um, uh, many dungeon, uh, like role players have, I'm going to have to use this application I found on my phone. D6 for the weapon skill, D6 plus 4. So let's roll our dice. 3, okay, so 7. Okay, bow skill is also uh, d6 plus 4. Okay, very good with the bow. Strength, d4 plus 3. d4 plus 3. Okay, so 
that's pretty interesting. It's a very strong wizard. Uh, uh, now it's got toughness, d4 plus 3. Wow, okay, excellent. Now we go to speed. Speed is d6 plus 4. Okay, so d6 plus 4 is 9. Okay, now bravery is d8 plus 3. Okay, so that's 10, isn't it? Amazing. Okay, so you're like a super wizard so far. Intelligence. Okay, so that's 10. Amazing. Okay, wounds. Fate's always two. Okay. Okay, so there we go. That's Astara the Bookish. Okay, I might put some kind of uh, character here and some emblem or something like that in this character sheet uh, later. But yeah, really impressive looking wizard so far. That's um, that's quite remarkable. So I think we did very well in our roles there. Okay, now next. Next is Thorwald Grimson, the Dwarf Warrior. Okay, so let's have a look at see what he can kind of come up with. Hi guys, um, <laughs> when I went back and checked the video, I realized that I had made a slight mistake. Pretty important one too, because I was rolling on the human charts for the dwarf and for the elf, when in fact they've got a different racial uh, you know, formula for them. So I'm actually gonna go back and just, yeah, we can check what they were before and then what, the, what they're gonna be in later. You're gonna see that they've got their equipment and that kind of thing and all their other information outlined here as well in advance so just in case you're wondering i'm just going to tell you now that i just made a mistake the fate point stayed the same the wounds will definitely get a chance to improve uh, his intelligence was nine let's see if that changes bravery 10 let's see if that gets better or worse speed he was very speedy for a dwarf so let's see if that gets better toughness i hope that stays the same because that was really good i'm sure, I'm sure dwarves just get better um, and his strength and bow skill, his bow skill is just through the roof. So he's more elf than dwarf, and a weapon skill is six. I hope that gets better as well. So let's go back, rewind, and let's check. So it was a d6 plus five for that. Three. So eight. Okay, a lot better already. Bow skill, d6 plus 4. Okay, that's more realistic. So that's 5. Ah, oh, sorry, d6 plus 4. Yeah, that's 5. Strength for a dwarf, d4 plus 3. Whoa, nice. So 7. Okay, really cool. Okay, so that's seven, that's beautiful. Toughness is D4 plus four, come on, another four. Three, okay, nice, I like that. That's what it's, it was before, that's good. Speed, speed for a dwarf is D6 plus three. Okay, let's check this. Done, done, here we go, yes. So the speed was in a D6 plus three. Don't want to get this wrong again. So seven. Then bravery, D8 plus three. Okay, so bravery, D8 plus three. Here we go. Nice. Nine. Intelligence. Now if I was playing a dwarf wizard, I'd really, this would really be an important factor. So it's D8 plus two. Wow. Super intelligent. Okay, wounds. Now this is the big one. Uh, don't screw me here, fate, and please provide my dwarf with a lot of wounds. Okay, here we go. Two plus one, isn't it? Three. Well, it's better than it what what it was before, and um, at least it wasn't two, so it's one better than what we had before. Now, the hand-hand combat stats will probably change because his 
weapon skill has improved. Let's go over here and have a look, and we can adjust that now. So weapon skill of eight. So two, 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 nice. Two, 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 makes it a lot better. I'm just gonna scrub all these out. I'm using a friction pen, just in case you're wondering what I'm using here. It's uh, Paul got me to, onto these, and they're really, really nice, actually. I can just use a pen, but uh, I can erase it at the same time. So two, two, two. 2, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, okay, well, he's look, looking a lot better now. You can actually hit uh, the, the regular warriors with a 5 or more, which is really cool. Now, his range combat is 5. So for 5, it was 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. A big difference. We will not be giving him a crossbow. Okay, that made a big difference. That that you know he looks more like a dwarf now. <laughs> so I'm great. I'm really happy that I realised this before I put the video up because it would have just ruined everything. It would have spoiled a little bit. So okay, so there we go. Thorwald, sorry about that, but we gave you a bit of a shock earlier. But now you're ready to. Brave the uh, the Skaven uh, in the uh, in the upcoming adventure. So that's cool. Okay, now we've got the elf. Now the elf stats are here. So we're going to start again and uh, see how we go. See how the elf goes. Okay, let's start with our D6 plus four. Now before bow skill was amazing. That's really what I really wanted. Toughness is super low, so that was terrible. Speed was good. Bravery was good. Intelligence is great if he was a wizard. Uh, fate was normal and wounds was good. So, our uh, weapon skill was really bad though. Okay, well, let's hope this time in this, in our uh, creation, we can make him also very deadly with a bow, but also proficient with a hand weapon so that he can get up close and I don't have to worry about him um, succumbing to death early on in our adventure. Right, okay, so here we go. Uh, weapon skill, D6 plus four. I'll take that any day. Eight, nice. Now the big one, bow skill. Come on, bow skill. Now this is D6 plus five. Okay, not too bad. It will change. It will change what happens down below. Uh, he will not be so proficient as before, but uh, but that's not too bad. So weapon skill and bow skill are the same. So that's pretty cool. Now strength, D4 plus three. Okay, here we go. Ooh, nice. So that's seven, isn't it? That's nice. I like that. Uh, toughness, D4 plus two. So come on, do it again. Ah, no. Okay, so his toughness is going to be uh, three. Okay, so even worse than before. Um, so the other ones had like, you know, Dorset D4 plus four and D4 plus three. So yeah, okay. It shows that they, they, you know, well, in the Warhammer world, they are toughness three. So, um, but yeah, he's gonna be very vulnerable up close now because it's gonna be quite easy for, especially most of the, uh, most of the scape will be rolling three damage dice, and all they need to get is a hit, and then you know, three damage dice and three or more, and they've they've wounded him. So he will not be going into combat. Speed D six plus five. Okay, here we go. Okay, nice. That's nine. Bravery, D8 plus three, hey? here we go. Uh, now this is bravery, so six. Okay, well, not as brave as before, but hey-ho. Intelligence, five, six, seven, eight, not bad. I think, I think intelligence comes into play if you're not a wizard, if you're resisting spells and that kind of thing, I think. Uh, fate will always be two. Now the big one, the big one will be his uh, his wounds. Now D4 plus D4 plus one. Come on, we've got to be better than four. Here we go. Uh, that's actually worse than before, but hey, three is better than two. It's better than <laughs> well, you can't get one. Um, so yeah, two is the lowest and. Uh, Five would have been the highest, but three, okay. Uh, that's, you know, that's better than nothing. 
Uh, okay, so let's check his bow skill. And hand in combat as well, so eight. Two, 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 two. Much better. So at least these. Now range combat is eight. So what are we looking at here? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, not as good as before, but hey. We can't have everything. Just double check that again. So for range four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now I think that's it. Um, yeah, these don't, the, you know, the equipment stays the same. We will then just double check any modifiers. Uh, so he's got a sword, doesn't do anything. He's got no armor. Now the dwarf did have some armor. He's got plus one toughness, so that goes to eight. For his leather armor and minus one bow skill. Well, he's not too worried about that. And minus one speed, so six in combat speed. Okay, guys, that's it. So that's just my erratic uh, character sheets. I just didn't want to upload the video and then people screaming and saying, hey Josh, you used the wrong bloody chart, you dingo. So there you go. Where party is assembled. Johan Kleber, the human warrior. Okay. Okay, Johan. Well, let's pray you get some good stats too, mate. So let's have a look. Okay. So six. Bow skill. Oh. Wow, another one. It's got a very high bow skill. Okay, strength. Okay. Is that right? D4 plus 3. Yep, okay. Just got lucky with the other ones. Okay, so he's not as strong as the other guys. I think he's even less strong. I think the wizard is stronger than him, actually. Toughness, D4 plus 3. Oh, no. That's not good. That's not good at all. Okay, but it's all part of the fun. All right, so let's go to the speed. Um, D6 plus 4. Okay, so it's uh, 7. 6, what did I say, plus 3, was it? 9. Very brave. Uh, intelligence, D8 plus 3. Okay, not so intelligent. Okay, so... What's next? Wound, D... Now, this is the most important one. Uh-oh. So, with two wounds. Two fate. Okay, so here we have the sergeant and men-at-arms uh, profiles. Uh, they look to be fixed, and um, I'm pretty happy keeping them fixed because they both got three wounds, and maybe we need their strength because the wizard ain't going to be the one uh, slogging his way through a horde of Skaven. I think it's going to be these guys are going to take the brunt of the um, uh, of the weight of the enemies uh, swarming in and. and um, and trying to kill us, so maybe we should stick with these stats and um, and see how we go there. Now, uh, the Sardin has one fate point, but the Metadarms have zero fate points. Uh, now, stat-wise, stat they're not too bad. Uh, they've got um, armor, which restricts their bow skills, but I don't think they'll be using any bows at all. They'll be mainly just all hand-to-hand -hand, uh, combat troops. Uh, and I think with their weapon skill it's quite high they've got seven and eight the size of eight weapon skills so maybe these guys will be outshining our adventurers but hey uh the, the the adventurers have got room to grow and develop and become the superheroes of the of the you know the old world uh the sergeants and men of arms are just going to be dying in their droves and you'll be just buying them again because in this game which made it more unique is that you can actually hire these guys and then you'd have to pay their upkeep uh, in between expeditions. So they'll stick around. If you didn't pay the upkeep, they'll just they'll just wander off and find the other uh, find another hero that's willing to pay their coin. So it's a really cool little system this. But of course, people could exploit that. And you know, once you get so much money, you could just keep buying more and more and more of these guys. 
but I think they maybe they had some um, uh, something in it in either Terror in the Dark, which is the expansion that gave you rules to uh, limit your uh, use of men at arms and sergeants. Um, again, I've never actually used. I don't think I've actually used an adventure with these guys in it yet. Um, and I've got to admit, my experience with Adventure Request is quite limited. I love the game, I love the concept, just had no one to play with until uh, during COVID we played it remotely. So let me fill in these stats, guys, and then um, I'll do that later. But the names of uh, the sergeant, of course, was Christopher de Hall. So Christopher, well done, you're the sergeant. Let's hope you stay around, mate. We've got uh, Jerome LeBennett, okay, he's a, he's a men-at-arms. So Jerome, there you go, mate. Let's see how far that's how far you make it in the, in the dungeon this time. Uh, Matthias Strom, head taker. He's the head taker. Okay, renowned for uh, beheading his foes. Okay, another men at arms. We've got Sir Tim of Baxter. Okay, some town township of Baxter in the old world. He's a human men at arms. So Tim, all the best to you, mate. Sir Tim. And we've got Gordon Van Innes. Okay. Uh, must have come from the River Rake, okay, and uh, has decided to help these warriors in uh, attaining their gold and glory. Also, just a point too, that uh, just before we move on, this is the time when they had Dwarf Wizards. Of course, this is 3rd edition, the time of 3rd edition, so I actually have one of the old Marauder tiny little Dwarf Wizards that I would love to use in a game, because, you know, what, whatever, what other chance do you, would you have I mean, he, he doesn't have the greatest um, arcane knowledge, only has starts with two spells. Um, you can pick any two from the four known by Human Wizard. Okay, and then they have to pay more in order to acquire new spells. So it's really tough for the Dwarf Wizards, but it'll be lovely to see them in a game of advance. He requests at some point that has to happen. Uh, maybe as even just like a kind of like a... Um, an NPC type character or something that would be really fun in an adventure, I think. Elf Wizards, you can have Elf Wizards, of course. Um, and of course, when they cast magic, they, they're, they're using their intelligence as a role uh, to cast a spell. Um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Okay. All right. Okay, let's move on now to let's just see exactly how much how much dosh they've got to spend on stuff okay weapons and armor before you can fill in the weapons and armor sections of your character sheet you'll need to know what equipment the hero possesses every hero starts off with 50 to 80 gold crowns roll d4 plus 4 and multiply this result by 10 to calculate the number of gold crowns you start with okay we've got our handy little dice calculator here Dice roller. So let's start with the wizard. I'm sure he's going to be super strong, super tough, super brave, and super rich. Yep, what did I say? Okay, so it's uh, roll d4 plus 4 says 80. Yep, so he's got 80 gold crowns. I told you, he's, got, he's just the man. He is just the man. Okay, we've got um, the dwarf warrior. Oh, he's got to be rich, surely. Nope. <laughs> so, uh, so what was it in? Plus four, so 50. Okay, poor old dwarf. He's je jealous of that wizard already. He's got his, got his bloody gold. And then um, who's next? Elf warrior. Okay, not too bad. 70. Oh, the dwarf is very de jealous. He can smell that gold. Okay, then human. Okay, not too bad. So what's that? Six, uh, 70 as well. Okay, so that's our starting goal. Now, uh, it says here that um, the goal, this goal may be spent on any of the items on the cost table. Spell components, if you have a wizard, you automatically get one spell component per starting spell. So human wizards get four free components. Okay, so we're gonna put that our, um, wizard here. And just put in here, you know. He's got four 
spill components to start off with, we know that. And once you've bought your equipment, you can fill in the weapons and armor sections of your character sheet. Okay, so... Okay, so I've just found the cost table here. So a sword is going to cost me 25 gold crowns. And what did Johan have? He had 70 gold crowns, so luckily he could afford that. I'll fill in the other details later. Uh, now, armor. He's going to need armor. Shield. Yeah, I'll give him a shield. And... It's minus 10 and uh, you can't afford anything else but leather armor so leather armor it is so it's 60 so it's got 10 left okay So got 10 gold left. Does he want to keep that 10 gold or does he want to spend it on something? I think maybe he will keep that 10 gold and um, he will save it up for something else, okay? Uh, later I'll just write in all the other uh, the other uh, information there for the weapons and armor just to save on time on the video Yeah, the uh, the super rich wizard Unfortunately, you can't buy any more extra spells because here you got spells and you know how much they cost to um, I, I'm assuming to acquire or learn um, And to be trained in but he can't buy any of those so um, let's get him a dagger. I think that'd be a good, good start. Uh, for 10. And he cannot take any armor. Maybe we can give him some rope and some Greek fire flasks. Uh, some of these, because the the the, um, the trap rooms, you need you need certain equipment to deal with, you know, either getting over a chasm, or having to deal with um, mold or uh, certain swarms and that kind of stuff. So we'll give them the ten. We'll give them the ten foot of rope. It's another. Oh, that's five. We'll give him now. It's got ten iron spikes. Now I'm sure somewhere in the rules, and I couldn't find it, is that you can basically uh, close the door, spike the door shut, and they that uh, sentries couldn't get get because only the sentries can actually open doors and close doors. I'm pretty sure there's a rule in there. If you know what that is, please let me know in the comments because I just cannot find it anywhere. And people think I'm crazy and they're thinking that I'm thinking about Wormer Quests, but I've never played Wormer Quests. So I'm sure there's something in here in the rules that you can use iron spikes. I'm actually going to give them iron spikes. What the hell? And they're for 10, aren't they? So we're at uh, 25. Okay, so he's got that left over, 55 gold. Okay, we'll, we'll write in his uh, dagger information later, and that's it. Our elf, well, he's definitely going to take a bow. Um, so we've got short bow, bow, long bow. It's got 70 gold, so we've got enough for a long bow. I'm thinking the long bow is going to be better, just better strength 
going by and better range and that kind of thing. Even though range is not really uh, the concern, I think just the strength of the of the bow will be better. So let's go with longbow, six bows, and then some more arrows. 50, 60, 70, but he's got no weapon. Aha. Uh -huh. So let's see. If he takes a bow for 25 and the sword for 25, that's 50. I think that's probably the way we have to go with it, I think. So bow and a sword. Two lots of six arrows, another 12 arrows. So 12, so it goes to 18, 18 arrows. And he's got left nothing, nothing left over. But then that's pretty good. I think we need him to have a decent number of arrows for each expedition. So let's put 18 arrows in there. Okay, that's it. That's what he's got. Okay, now we'll go to my dwarf. Poor little dwarf. Um, now, he's pretty good. He's got good bow skill. I'm actually thinking about giving him a crossbow at this stage. Um, maybe he's going to do more than that with the weapon skill. Um, it'd be cool to have a dwarf with a crossbow, I think. Yeah, he's got 40, he's got 50 gold coins, though. That's the problem. Uh, he's not, I, won't, I don't think he'll be able to do that because he won't have any sort of... You'll only have a dagger, which is no good. I really want to give him an, uh, a Warhammer. So Warhammer is 25. Twenty-five, so we've got twenty-five left, and then armor would be good because the elf hasn't got armor on him. Uh, leather armor, that's it. And that's his fifty. Wow. Okay, so I'll fill in the rest of those st uh, those stats in there, and we'll come back in just a second. Okay, so just in closing, guys, we thought we'd just have a quick look at the character sheets again, because after we've made a couple of corrections here and there, and adjustments uh, to the uh, equipment uh, statistics and that kind of thing, we'll just go over them one by one very quickly. So we've got Johan... Uh, Kleber and uh, or Kleber. So weapon skill six. Uh, yeah, bow skill very high, but down to eight because of his armor. Strength of five, toughness to six, which is not too bad. Speed of six in combat, bravery nine, intelligence five, fate points two, and two wounds. That's probably the biggest worry, being a a guy that's going to be in combat a lot. So okay, that's him. Astazar, the bookish, uh, the warrior mage. Okay, weapon skill seven, bow skill eight, strength of six, toughness six. Uh, so yeah, standard intelligence ten, which is really good for him, uh, as he's going to be the the primary spell user and caster. Um, um, with a dagger. Uh, hopefully, we can make that a magical dagger at some point during the during the quest and um, make him really tank him up to be a a really offensive wizard so yeah he looks pretty cool now these were the ones that i just recently adjusted so now the dwarf looks much 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 more competent in in combat and yeah he's going to survive and you know hopefully be the main the main man in uh, in combat there with his warhammer um so i think maybe in the future we should get him a shield and get him some better armor uh, when we have when we have enough gold to do that, to really tank him up. Then we have our elf, um, Eltharion. Uh, so yeah, bow skill eight, not too bad in the re recreation, the adjustment there. And uh, yeah, he looks pretty competent now with a sword as well. So that sword will come in much uh, much handier. Now uh, let me just check, of course, the strength. Now maybe the strength has changed let's see what to think, of, think about here so seven hey eh? strength 
strength seven with a sword is five. Ha ha ha. Well, he's become very good with a sword now because he's dealing seven damage dice for that. Uh, let me just check the other. It's going to be one and a 12. Yep, that's okay. Okay, now that makes a big difference. Uh, you probably want him in combat more than you do with the bow. Now, strength of seven also will be five. Five damage dice, which is already five damage dice. Okay, I don't think his strength changed. So just, just checking that again, just making sure we don't have anything that's out of place or anything that's wrong before we start. So I'll double check those just to make sure before we, we before we get underway. And I would like to put some draw some emblems and you know put some kind of character uh, picture here if I can, uh, which would be nice just to just to personalise each profile. They do come with this map as well, so one you know I've got to draw the map out as I go because I'll be removing tiles and replacing further up the dungeon in unexplored areas, and the explored areas will be removed, and so that the map you need to in order to work your way out of the dungeon um, either between the expeditions or at the end of end of the quest you actually got to walk all the way back and try to survive getting out of the place so there you go guys thank you very much for watching this uh, character creation for advanced hero quest i hope it was interesting and hope you enjoy your easter uh, holidays around the world and uh, take care of yourselves please put your comments in below about who do you think will fare best in the adventure, who do you think will really struggle. I mean, we do have five men-at-arms, okay, our Patreons. <laughs> so let's see how they go. Now, if uh, if one of them does succumb to death and we do acquire a new one, then another patron's name will be uh, added to this list of hearty warriors who are, uh, must be getting paid a lot to come down with these guys in order to... Let's kick these rats out of the sewers. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, stay tuned. There will be some uh, our first adventure. We're going to kick off hopefully very soon. I'm going to be going to paint those men at arm warriors here. I'm doing that at the moment. In the very rough stages, I actually went with a metallic, yeah, this really old hammer style. No non-metallics here. I'm going to give that a go, and I've just started on those, so they'll be coming very shortly. Okay, guys, thanks very much for watching. Take care, and see you in the next one. Torboros Bane. Voice over by Owen Staten. You can find me on the Time Between Times podcast or Spectre of the Sea. If you want to contact me, Owen Staten at AOL.com. Diochenbauer.